stress today. Yeah, we all have it. It's like being in a boxing ring and you're getting bashed to the left and to the right and you're just frazzled because everything's just, it's just too much. It doesn't matter if it's because you want to move to another state or if it's a job that you can't stand or you're in a relationship that, you know, not so good or money problems, whatever it is, or just too much in your day. Your kids are going to soccer and school and band or dancing lessons, karate, whatever it is. It's just like, it's too much. And you're telling yourself, this is too much. I think one of the main things to think about when trying to reduce stress is trying to prevent it or reduce it ahead of time. I think that we need to be on firm ground before a situation happens because sometimes things are out of our hands and we're shocked by whatever happens. So if you're already, you've got both feet on the ground, you're feeling pretty steady in your life, then when these events, unexpected events happen in your life, you're not so like, whoa, shocked, and you still be shocked, but you'll be able to recover better. You'll be able to know what to do. You'll have a plan. You're like, okay, this just happened to me. Don't freak out. Here's what we're going to do. And that's where those notebooks come in handy. Those of you who are new to my channel, I write everything down in notebooks. I find them very helpful in keeping my life organized. We all have our own ways of organizing, so do what you know, works for you. So in getting started and keeping your life simple and stress, I can't say stress-free, because that's not going to happen. As little stress as we can keep, I think one, you need to find out what do you love in your life that we want to keep. And then you want to ask yourself, what don't you like in your life? Is it your schedule? There's just too many things happening. And if so, what can you do about it? And don't say, oh, I can't do anything about it. I have to do this. I have. You don't have to do anything. You could prioritize and pick what you need to do. One of the things I just can't do is say, drive and answering phones. Or at dinner time when I'm with my family, I'm not going to answer the phone. As a matter of fact, I turn the volume off when I'm doing something. Or if I'm editing or working, I have to turn my volume off because it gets very stressful because the phone will ring all day long. 90% of the time, it's someone trying to sell me something. They can leave a message, I'll return the call. So that saves a lot of stress and hassle, these, these phone calls, it ringing, ringing, ringing. And then I can return the call when I have time, where I feel I can talk to the person instead of, because I don't like when I'm talking to somebody and I'm being rushed. I think it's best we call people back when we're not rushed and stressed, because when you're stressed, you emit that energy out to everybody around you. And it's not fair for those around you to get the brunt of your stress. So let's talk about moving. Some of you might think that moving will solve all your problems. I feel, this is just my opinion, everybody's different, we've got different personalities, different ways we handle things. I think that we need to find our peace and our happiness within ourselves before you go anywhere because that happiness is within you and it's not some place or somebody. You can't blame others for your problems. If you are then you need to stop and take a look at that and then you just need to remove yourself from the situation. You don't feed into it because it's not going to help anything. A lot of times when we get stressed we do end up blaming others when it is us that has overwhelmed ourselves. We're not getting to sleep, we're not eating well, we're taking on too much and we just, we're human. We just can't do it all. Some people could do a lot more than others. Some people have really high energy and they can get a lot more done than others. If you find someone stressing you out, you just calmly say, I think it's best we talk at another time when you know, you're know you cooled down. So let's take an example. You're at work, you hate your job. You have to ask yourself, why do you hate that job? Is it because they don't pay you enough? You don't like the people because they're mean, <laughs> they're rude, whatever. I always say find another job or start your own business. Starting your own business you might have to do that on the side after work until you can make enough. So making small changes in your life can make big changes in your life later on. But if you do nothing, your situation is not going to change. You're going to stay stressed if you don't do something about it. I personally see people doing too many things in a day. They're working full time, they've got the kids, and then the kids are signing up for like five different things and then you're driving around and then the school wants you to bring cookies or do a carpool, whatever the situation is. People are pulling you from left to right. You're worried about making them happy or pleasing other people. You can't do that because you're trying to please everybody else and you won't. You'll still, you'll do what they want and they're still not happy and you're definitely not happy. You have to like,
take a step back and find what's going to make you happy. If you're happy, then usually everybody around you is going to be pretty happy. You know, the saying about dinner time, I think it's real important you sit and you look at your husband or wife uh, in the eyeballs and your kids in the eyeballs and listen to what they have to say. When phones are ringing and you're answering and you're texting and you're doing other things, you're not paying attention to your family. The more open you are to things, the more opportunities will arise. You can't say, well, you know, I haven't had the opportunity because, again, I've done it. I mean, just in the last few years have I kind of figured out I can make the changes in my life that I want. Really, since maybe when I started planning to come to Florida before that, I was a little frazzled, well, a lot frazzled. Sleep is one of the most important things along, as I mentioned, eating well. If you don't sleep and you don't eat well, you're going to be cranky. <laughs> you're not going to be productive. I know a lot of you say, I have so much to do, I don't have time to sleep. You know, I don't have time to eat good food or I don't have the money to eat good food. But if you don't, you're not going to succeed at what you want to do. You'll get a whole lot more done and be much more productive when you're rested and healthy. Now there's some people in your lives that you're kind of stuck with, like family. Instead of helping that cranky person being more cranky, just say good things to them. Your hair looks great. Your shoes look great. Find something that you truly mean and find a positive thing to say about them. If they come back with negativity, you come back with positive thing to say. And each time you see them, as much as <laughs> it might drive you nuts, just try to stay positive, especially if you work with them day in, day out. It's just best to be nice to them and see what happens. It's, it's going to be better than if you feed into that because they get ugly, you get ugly, and then you're not happy with yourself for being ugly to other people. Maybe you're that kind of person who's like, I just don't give a crap. But you know what? You do because you're not going to be a happy person if, if, you, if you feel that way, if you're feeling that negativity towards others. I know it sounds corny. I like going to the ocean and watching the water. Oh boy, that's relaxing for me. I just could sit here for hours. Matter of fact, I'll, I'll turn this camera around. You see where I am? I hope you could see that okay. You see Rick over there? I wish I had a camera with like, where I could see both sides. I'll show you some more in a bit. Walking in nature is a very peaceful thing. And again, some of you are gonna say, I just don't have time to do that. I don't have time. You could still meditate in a room, close your eyes and think good thoughts. Just, just get rid of that, those negative vibrations that come through your body. Cause it's just maybe peaceful music. I love music. Boy, does that change how I feel? Depending on what kind of music, I need something uplifting. I'm feeling tired. I'll put something that will uplift me a bit. If I need to calm down, I find something that relaxes me. Music is powerful medicine, that's for sure. Now I'm into these essential oils, as you know, with Young Living. That's, uh, that's been amazing. Well, I'll talk about that another time. But yeah, I think that's going to be a lifelong education for me to learn more about that. I know a lot of you know more than I do about essential oils. It's amazing what it could do for relaxing or giving you a pick-me-up. Sometimes we do have to cry or be bummed out for a minute, but then we gotta move on. We gotta move forward. We have to take action. Whatever horrible event or stressful event that has happened to you, pull out that notebook. Write down what's good in your life. What things you don't like. What would you like to happen? What would you like to happen? Because that's a problem I think we all have where we're like, okay, we know what we like in our life. We know what we definitely don't like in our life, but we don't know what we do want in our life. That's a big one. That's where you have to research and find out and dig deep for that one. And sometimes you need different experiences in life to even know what you want. That's one of the reasons we want to travel the world. I've traveled quite a bit in my life, but nowhere near as so, some of you. you. Some of you have been everywhere. But I find traveling and seeing people from different cultures, different backgrounds, it, it opens my mind to like different ways of living. You know, this is like a lifestyle change. That we're talking here if you're looking to find peace and happiness and less stress it's really a lifestyle change I tell you too and I've talked about this before this decluttering minimalizing and I'm not saying you know you have to be a Buddha um, but the less things you have the less space you need the smaller home you need 
the less things you have, the less you have to work at that job you don't like, or the less money you even have to make in general, even if it's a career that you love doing. But it's not always about the money. It, it's about the time. Time is worth more than money, in my opinion. Of course, you got to pay the bills, so that's why I always say you have to do something you love. But even if you're, you know, I'm not rich, that's for sure, because there's always bills coming in, especially medical bills. Those, just, you know, they, they're always there. Bills will always come in. There's always something going on. The less things you have, the less bills, the less you have to clean. Unless you love cleaning <laughs> and you like paying bills, then go at it. So being free of all those things just gives you more time and more time to think, more time to meditate, or just think about what you want to do. That's, I think, where most of us are stuck. We need to find what we want to do. And I'm still in that process. I'm going to start with doing more traveling, seeing more places. I love Florida. I mean, after my travels, I may end up back here. But I can't say where I'm going to live permanently for the rest of my days. I'm only uh, 49 in October. You know, I have about another 60 years to go, 70 years. I don't plan on going anywhere. So when you find yourself stuck and not knowing what to do next in life, my first thing that I do is start decluttering. I start getting rid of more stuff going through my emails, getting rid of apps, getting rid of those bookmarked. I mean, I mean, I get rid of everything. <laughs> and the process for some reason, because it puts me in motion, starts leading me into these different thoughts and ideas and, and it gives me an idea of what I want to do next. So it's pretty interesting. Just try it if that, you know, if this is your thing. Just give it a shot, start decluttering, start reducing the amount of things you're doing in a day. Try not answering the phone all day. Cut back maybe your TV time. Give your, make yourself have this time to do nothing. And do nothing, but just rest your mind. And what's funny is it's very hard to do. And But if you're able to, you're gonna start getting thoughts and ideas what you would like to do. It's truly like, it's like, I don't know. It's pretty magical. <laughs> Just try it. See what happens. If nothing happens, you got nothing to lose. I always say that. Nothing to lose by trying something. And once you find that peace and happiness within yourself, you're going to admit it to the people around you. You only have one life to live. Make it the best one you can with no regrets. Let me know how your journey on de-stressing your life goes. I would like to hear what you have to say. Well, thanks for watching. Thumbs up. And we'll see you next time.